Hi guys, it's Sherry. Today we are gonna do something a little bit different and I want to play around with some wood blanks and make a necklace instead of earrings this time around. So in order to do that, you're gonna need four of your regular solid round wood blanks and then you're gonna need one that is open. And the very first thing that I would like to do is kind of just lay my pieces out to see how I want to set this up. So I know my necklace is gonna lay something along those lines. So once you have everything lined up, then you could take a permanent marker and just butt them right up against each other. This way you know exactly where your holes need to be drilled. So I know I'm gonna need a hole right here. And make sure everything is lined up nicely. Make sure that is straight. Right there. Right there. And then we gotta go straight up and put our last one right at the top. So that is where our holes will be drilled for this. And I'm gonna take my drill and I will start drilling my holes. But before I do, I like to just take something with a straight edge and give me an idea to make sure that these are somewhat even. Because sometimes when you're measuring something just by eyeing it up, it'll be slightly off. So I wanna make sure that where my hole goes, it's gonna be even, especially on the very first one. So you can see I'm just using a straight edge. I'm gonna put my drill there, hold it straight up and then start going down. Do the same thing. And you'll hear it pop right through. And then you could do a clean drill. And I like to go through the back side as well. This is an old one that I just had laying around. So I'm just going to reuse that and go right over it. So if you have old ones, this is a perfect way of using up some of your old stuff. Do the same thing. And don't worry about, see how that kind of came off? Don't worry about that because these are completely being covered. Get your sanding block and just kind of sand off any of those rough edges. And it doesn't take long. You could go through again. Just make sure that it's all nice and open. So there, now it's nice and smooth. You don't have no rough edges. All right, so next, we have all our beautiful fabric that we um, have laid out. So I chose this Japanese style. I thought it was just absolutely stunning. And it comes in this entire pack. I did get this off of Timu. Um, so if you're looking for this particular one, just go on to Timu and put fabric samples in there and they'll pop up. So. I'm gonna work with all five of these and make one really unique necklace. I also have different washi tapes that I want to incorporate into this piece as well because I do like to do my front and back of all my pieces. 
So the very first one we will do is our middle section. And I chose this particular one to be my middle because I have to cut the circle out, but I also want to incorporate this gold leaf and this beautiful red flower charm that would work so perfect with this fabric. So just get your um, fabric. I don't want this cat, so I'm going to avoid the cat. And then I'll just cut out two pieces because I want it to be front and back as well. And then I have my Mod Podge. And I will just go right over my entire piece. And yes, I put this on pretty thick because I like to know that my entire piece is covered. I make sure that my edges are really well done because that is what is going to hold your fabric on really well. Is you have to make sure you have that glue on there. Oops and especially around the edges because the edges is what's going to hold your fabric all together so make sure you are covering your entire piece if you get a mess don't worry about it make sure you're holding it um the hole at the top is facing the top and we want to make sure that as many flowers go around I want to make sure I could cover up as or use as many flowers on this piece as possible. And then I am going to rub this on. Get nice and smooth. And then once again, go right over your entire piece and make sure you are getting that glue on there because you want that saturated into the glue. The fabric is thicker than paper and it's more porous. So you want to make sure that glue can really work its way through that fabric. And then we'll set that off to the side to dry. This one, keep off to the side because that will go on the back. Our next one is this. This is one of my favorites. Look how beautiful. All that gold. Absolutely gorgeous. I want to make sure that I had a solid piece on this. So this way I could really incorporate the entire thing. So I just like to lay my piece down. Get my wood blank, lay it down, and then I'm just going to go right across because I will need two pieces. Cut it. And cut it. Make sure you save your scraps because you could use that for another day. Put one piece off to the side and get your piece nice and saturated. And don't forget your edges. Very, very important, do not forget your edges. I wanna make sure. Now all I do is rub my finger right across to make sure no air pockets are underneath my fabric and everything is nice and smooth. And then we have this one with the beautiful fans. Look how pretty that is. So I know I want to definitely incorporate one of these fans and one of the green ones or even if i got this section here so i'm going to cut a little bigger than i normally would 
just to make sure I can incorporate the pieces that I want on. I'm going to leave this off to the side because this I will decide which piece I want on the back. Really focus on how you want your print to lay. So as I'm doing it, you'll see that I'm kind of realizing how this is going to lay out onto my piece. So I know this is my middle section. This is going to go right on the top. So I want my fan to face this direction. And same thing with this one. This one really doesn't matter because you could go any direction with that. But if you have something that you know you want to face a certain direction, make sure that you're laying your piece down properly. So when you put on the fabric, it will lay in the direction that you want it to lay. And then we have these, this gorgeous flower one. I am going to avoid the butterfly because I feel like it does not go with the rest of the pieces. I really want to focus on a lot of the smaller ones in this one. I don't want a big one. I want a lot of the smaller ones or maybe part of the big one. So the most important thing right now during this process is just focusing on where and what you want on your pieces so like here i know i definitely want all those flowers on one of mine so i'm gonna cut right there because that to me says i will have that now do i want that big one small one do i want there i think i like this section right here so i'll choose that little section right there so I'll put one off to the side and you know this piece will lay like this the flowers really can go in any direction, so you just got to figure out how you want it to lay. I know I want a lot of these little flowers and then part of the big one. So you can see I am really focusing on how I want my piece to lay out as I am gluing all my fabric on. And I think that's the most important step while you're gluing is just making sure that what you want on your piece is gonna lay properly. If you lift it and it moves, take your finger and rub it back down and then just go over it one more time. And that way, you know your piece will stay flat down and it won't lift up on you. And then lastly, we have this. Look how gorgeous this one is. I absolutely love this. I really like the idea of having this on one side and then one of these birds on the other side. So I got to kind of just play around and see exactly how I can incorporate that. So maybe I could do this little section here and then kind of go over here and get part of the bird's wings or just that. I really need to focus on how I want this one to lay out. I really like incorporating that area right there. And now I got to think of another area. Do I want to do a small bird? Or do I just want to add the big one again? Let's just do one big bird. And please don't forget, we are going to be adding our washi tape on the other side. Okay, so now I have all my pieces nice and glued. Our next step is to wait for everything to completely dry. So I am going to, normally I would blow dry this and do a real fast one. But because this material is a little thicker, 
I'm gonna give this about a full half hour to dry. I am gonna wait it out and then I'll start trimming them up and then we'll do the back sides with the washi tape and the fabric and it's gonna be beautiful. Um, everything that I am envisioning right now, I think these are gonna come out fantastic. So let your pieces dry and then we will return. Okay, so all my pieces are completely dried and I did trim one of them up. Look how beautiful that looks. So we're gonna take our scissors and we are going to trim each one of our solid circles. And all you do is take your scissors, go right to the edge of the wood and just trim that uh, material right off. You wanna make sure you have sharp scissors for this so you're not pulling the actual fabric because if you pull it too hard, you will rip the fabric off of the wood. And then you're just gonna have a ruined piece. So just get a sharp pair of scissors. If you do not have a sharp pair of scissors, you can use a X-Acto knife. And I'm gonna show you on the one with the open hole, how to use the X-Acto knife to do that. All right, beautiful. Next, I'm going to actually trim around the sides or the edges, I should say, um, with my scissors, but I'm gonna use my X-Acto knife in the middle. And you could use your X-Acto knife around the edges as well. I just think it goes faster for me using the scissors. And now I'm gonna keep this piece because I could use this for something else. All right, here I'm gonna grab my glass plate and I'm gonna get my X-Acto knife and I am going to trim right around inside and get that um, fabric all trimmed up in there. Sometimes they go really easy and then sometimes it kind of puts up a little fight and that's because of how thick the material is. So I need to really kind of work with this one and just keep going around it till you cut that. Don't get discouraged if it's giving you a problem. Just keep going right over it. And it's best if you have a brand new blade and your X-Acto knife as well. Let's cut off your extra pieces that may be stuck on there with the strings. Okay. I'm going to take one of my nail files and then I'm just going to push down inside. And then I'll kind of push my fabric down. It's not going to cut it off, but it's going to push it down. And then I'm gonna get my Mod Podge again. And I'm just gonna grab a Q-tip for this one. I'm gonna put it on pretty thick and then go right in the middle, go right around it. And then push down, just push your pieces right down, right into the, and that'll help stick anything 
that's like kind of popped up or frayed, that'll help stick all the frayed stuff down. And I'll keep it nice and smooth for you. Okay. And you'll have a little piece of sticking up here. And then after that dries, I'm going to show you how you could go over an old piece of material that um, you may have on a wood blank that you didn't like. So I'll show you how you could go right over that and create a new piece. So let that dry. All right. Next, get something that is pointy. I love this poker. That's what I use all the time for my wood earrings. All you're going to do is find your hole and then poke your hole right through your material. And that'll keep it open for your jump ring. Find your other one. Do that to each one of these. You want to make sure your fabric is dry when you're doing this part. Because if it's not, your fabric will easily pull away from your wood. So you want to just make sure your stuff is dry when you're doing this. What I like to do is if I can't find the hole is I'll kind of go over like this. And then it's so much easier to find your hole that way. All right, so let's get our back side started. So now, once again, I want to lay my piece, but I'm going to lay it upside down. And I'm going to kind of decide how I want to lay my piece out once again. And this way, I know I'm laying my washi tape properly. So that's going to be this way. Nope, that's going to be the top one right there. That's the top. So you're working backwards now, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult. This one I want here. Just make sure your pieces are laying the correct way. Because you do not want your stuff to be upside down. And my biggest one is going to be this bird because I want to make sure this bird isn't upside down and it's going to look silly. So I need to make sure that that bird is going to lay the proper way. And my fan. My fan is the other one. I want this to lay upwards, not upside down. I mean, upside down would look just as pretty. So let's see. Maybe I should have it upside down. I like it actually better upside down. Hmm. Yeah, I like it better upside down. So let's swap. Yeah, let's swap those. Okay. So now we have our pieces laid out. We know how they're going to uh, be on our chain. All right, and I have my washi tape and I have all my other pieces of fabric. I know this one is my bird, so keep that upright. This is my fan. So I'm gonna lay my fabric out with each one Face in the correct direction. So as I'm working, I know which is which and how it needs to lay. And then this is this one. And then of course we have that for that. Okay. I am not going to put washi tape on this one because I have the material already on here from um, an old project that I just didn't um, finish. So I am just going to work with material only on this particular one. Washi tape will go on 
the other four. So this one we can actually set off to the side. I will let my front completely dry while we work on these. So since we have the fan, let's start with the fan. And I actually decided I want to kind of get a little of both of these sections here. Um, I'm kind of thinking I'm going to do half one and then put my washi tape there. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So I got to play around with this at this point. So let me take my, my material. I'll cut that. We are going to put our glue on. Don't forget to make sure you grab all your sides. So the first thing I want to do is lay my washi tape down. And I am not going to paint these pieces. I want the background to be light. A lot of times I will paint the wood and then put my washi tape on. I want this natural look, so I am not going to do that. And I'm going to take my skinny washi tape. I'm going to lay that right up against it. And I'm going to do one more washi tape with some gold on it. This is an, um, another skinny one, but it's a little bit wider than the other one. There we go. And let's line that right up next to it. And you want to make sure you're buttoning these right up next to the other piece of washi tape. And now we will get our fans and decide how we are going to, I'm going to go right in the middle there. I'm going to go right here. And I want to kind of lay this down and check this out. And I think I'm going to go right over that. Okay. So now I'm going to get more of my Mod Podge. I'm going to go right over my piece here. And then I will lay my fan and I want to make sure I'm laying it exactly where I want it so I really got to kind of just play around and why I like this this particular one here is it has the lines so it really helps me place my material where it needs to be straight so I can kind of just go off of that particular line and know that my piece is going to be straight. So little things like that are really a good, a good little tip because sometimes we think things look straight and then afterwards they're not. But if you have a line that you could go off of, it's really useful. Okay. And now I will go over that entire piece. And I love doing like different things like this, just adding all kinds of different medias together. If you want to just stick with um, working with just the material, you may do that. You may do the same thing that we did with the first side to the back side. But I just love 
add in a little bit extra because this way we can wear this necklace either way. So it's two necklaces in one. So look how nice that's going to look. Okay. And I want to make sure when I'm laying this out, when I'm done with them, I'm going to lay them out exactly how they're going to lay on my uh, necklace. This way I don't have to keep guessing back and forth on how I had it initially. All right. So now we have this one, and I love this one. I'm actually thinking this time around, I'm going to go straight down. But I do love that section there, but I don't want just a wing. Hmm, I really like that. Let's see. I'm actually not going to add the bird this time around. As much as I want it to, I'm not going to. Because I really like these little uh, parts here. So this time, I'm going to go across. You know what? Actually, I have a better idea. Let's go this way. I have a nice idea here. I'm gonna go right in the middle. And then I'm gonna take my bird and I'm gonna add it right to the top here, right on the top. So this way I still get a little bit of his head on there. And then I could add more of the fabric. So do I want to add the wing down like that? No, I'm going to take that wing off completely. And make sure it's right across the washi tape. And then once again, I will put a nice layer of glue over all of this. I'm really trying to stick with the same color patterns here. So I want to see what this one looks like. That's the section I want right there. So I'm like trying to fight it. Okay. Let me put that off there. Cause this is so pretty, this little section here. And I wanna make sure that this is perfectly straight across. Actually, I'm gonna go right over the hole because it's so much easier doing the hole and finding the middle section when you're using the washi tape. Oh, I forgot to put my glue down, darn it. Okay. Our washi tape, put it right in the middle. Make sure you rub that down. And yes, I am putting everything on my wet glue. I know people will wait till their glue dries. I do not do that. I just put it right on the wet glue and it has always worked out beautiful for me. And now I am actually going to cut that off. And then I will go right here Put that on and I'm going to go with my washi tape again. I'm actually going to put a little layer of glue right over that 
just to kind of help my washi tape stay on. And go right in the middle. All right. And then let's saturate our piece one more time. We're almost done with this, guys. And then it'll be the easy part of sealing everything. Um, I have a new product that I want to try instead of resin. So um, make sure you stay tuned to see what I am going to use for that. And let's go. Let me see here. I'm going to kind of add different things. Alrighty. As you can see, I am doing each one completely different. Um, how did that lay? Like that. That laid like that. I want to make sure that each design that I create is going to be unique. So I don't stick with the same thing over and over and over. I love to make all my pieces different. And we are gonna go here. Uh, okay, I want to cut a little bit shorter or um, skinnier. I just want a small strip for this one. And we're going to lay this right in the middle. And once again, line it up with your paper. So your washi tape is the perfect line. Don't forget that, guys. And then once again, I'm going to lay this one. And I'm going to take my washi tape and butt it right up against my fabric so let me just i'm just going to kind of trim some of this up because it's very messy all right rub everything down make sure it's nice and solid in there and then get my glue And put that off to the side. Okay, so now this is completely sealed. It's completely dried. It looks beautiful. And now we are once again just going to add our fabric on here. So we're going to put our fabric right over our old fabric. If you have a new one, perfect. This is just an old one that I had laying around. I want to make sure I'm saturating that real well because the fabric now has all that glue soaked up, the old glue. So I want to make sure I can put enough new glue on there um, to assure it's going to stay laying down properly. And I want to try and get all my flowers that I can on here. And rub that down real good. All right. So now let this set completely dry. I'm once again going to let it dry for about a half hour. And then we'll come back, we will trim this up, and then I'm going to show you the new glaze that I got 
for the top of these. This way, I don't always have to use resin. See, before I let this completely dry, I'm actually going to add my little white lines across the fabric and the washi tape to give it a nice, clean, finished look. So my washi tape is going to go partially on the fabric and the washi tape underneath. This way it gives me a nice, clean, finished line. And I don't have to add anything else to it to give it that finished look. Oops. And we're going to have to... The glue wants to stick to my finger, so let's use a tool to lay that down. And then... Put one last coat of Mod Podge right over that. Now, let everything completely dry and we will come back. All right, so I let these dry for about an hour or so. So my next step is to start trimming everything up. You see there's still a little wet glue underneath. So we have to let these dry a little bit more before we put our top layer on. If you are getting glue as you punch the holes in, make sure you let it completely dry. Because you don't want to put a top coat on with glue underneath. You want to make sure everything is just dry and sealed properly before you put the final seal on. Alrighty. Beautiful. All right. Next step, get your chrome gold marker and let's start edging our sides here. So we want to make sure all our sides are edged off. And these are real simple to do. And I like to edge my sides um, on the top and bottom. So I just take my marker and just go right around the edge. So you see how I'm doing right around the edge there? And that'll edge everything off and make it look professionally done. And it just gives it a beautiful finish. All right, I'm gonna feel this, make sure this is dry. Because I need to get the inside of this as well. I wanna finish this piece off completely. All right, so we're gonna try to get the inside. And you just rub it on there. Give it that beautiful finished look. All right, and then I'm gonna take my marker, I'll edge the inside and the outside part. I'm gonna do the insides before I do anything else, just because it's easier. Just make sure we're getting up on that edge. Look how beautiful that looks. So we'll let that completely dry. Now, these sides are dry. This side, I think, needs a little bit longer. So we will start coating these sides. And while those are drying, then we know... Um, we'll give that a chance as well. So this is the new glaze that I want to try. This is supposed to work on 
just about anything. When I was doing some research on this, you could do wood, you could do um, jewelry, clay. I mean, the list goes on, glass, metal. There's all kinds of things that you could use with this particular gloss glaze. And it seems very simple. Um, you just brush it on with a paintbrush and then you do a, you do one layer, let that dry, do another layer. Depends on how thick you want it. And the thicker you put it on, the more it kind of seems like it's supposed to dome. So I'm not a hundred percent sure, but we're going to give this a try and see what we get out of this. It's supposed to be simple, oops, and it's supposed to take about 24 hours to 100% um, dry and cure. So I'm gonna take my paintbrush, I'm just gonna dip it in. And another thing that I read was not to play with it for too long. You know, just put it on, gloss it over, and kind of be done with it. It's, what I was kind of getting out of it. So I am going to actually do the sides of this one, but I'm actually going to wait to do the other side before I do the sides because it's kind of going on this side and I don't want anything on that side just yet. So I'm going to put one more Thing on here and I want to, I want to kind of make this a little bit thicker but not too thick and I want to see if this leaves brush brush strokes which I don't think it will because it kind of seems to be blending real nice together for me it does not have an overly strong smell which is super nice I wasn't sure if it was going to be strong smelling or not And it's also supposed to um, dry crystal clear. So I'm really hoping that with this product, that this will help replace some of the resin that I do because not all my pieces I want to be resin, but I end up putting resin on them because it looks so much nicer with the resin. So I want to see if this will be a better option for the projects I don't want to use resin or for um, the products, uh, projects that I know people um, want to use um, just glazes. I'm gonna kinda layer some of these areas, make sure they're even with the gloss and it's nice because it gives you like a little cloudy look so you can really see how thick it is like this one i know is nice and full that one now is nice and full that one is as well and this one i think could use just a tad bit more in this area All right, so I'm gonna let those dry and see how long it takes to dry. Because I know you could add more, but it takes 24 hours total to cure. But I'm assuming they'll dry and then you could put another coat on if you want. So I wanna really just play around with that and see. Let me do this one. And this is really, this is pretty thick, which is nice because it's kind of staying exactly where I put it. So you see here, I'll show you. So you see, I'm kind of putting it on like that and then I'm just spreading it and it's staying there. It's not spreading out too much, but it is giving the brush stroke um, a smooth finish. So it is spreading just enough to take away the brush stroke the brush stroke so I do like that 
So, so far I'm having positive thoughts on this particular gloss. And I like that we can, that it is so thick because I think I should only have to do one coat. Because these pieces do not have to be domed. So that is really nice. So I think one coat will work perfect. All right. So I will let this completely dry. And then when they're dry, I'll come back and show you. All right, guys. So I let this go for about 15, 20 minutes. And it is very smooth to the touch. But it almost feels like it may still be wet, but nothing's coming out. I don't know if it's just so smooth in that area because it's thicker there than this area. Not 100% sure, but everything feels dry to the touch. So I'm going to put another layer on. We're going to see how the second layer lays. And I'm going to put this one on a tad bit thicker than the first layer. And I'm not going to move it around as much as I did the first one. Because it does tell you not to basically play around with it. Just to my understanding, put it on, leave it alone. Kind of what I got out of it. So we are going to see. So that's a pretty thick layer there. I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to do three scoops there. And then just spread it. And I'm actually going to do one more scoop over here because I want this to kind of lay even. Make sure my sides are nice and clean. All right. I almost feel like I got bubbles in this right here. So if I see the bubbles, I'm going to kind of go over it with my paintbrush because I don't want any little dry bubble marks. But look how beautiful that looks. The shine on that is amazing. And I could probably stop right there, to be quite honest. But I really want more of a, like a, I don't want to say a dome look because I don't want it to be domed. But I want it to be a little thicker like I put my resin on. So that's kind of why I'm playing around to see what this does. And it's the perfect chance to do it since I have my pieces made ready to go. So I think on the other side I may do it just one coat. But for this side, I'm going to do two coats. Here's a little bubble. See, little bubbles are kind of popping up. So as they're popping up, I'm just going to go over them and make sure the bubbles are out of there. So this one. Now, I'm very curious if when this dries, will it go flat? Or will it keep a thickness to it? So that's kind of why I'm playing around. I put a more like a second layer on here because I want to see how much you could really build this up. And once this is completely dry off camera, I will put a um, one coat on the other side. And then once that is completely dry, we'll come back because I want to show you everything all at one time of the two layers and the one layer. It'll be a nice side by side view 
showing you the difference. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure I'm cleaning my sides once again. Make sure no bubbles are in there. And I think that's pretty good. I am going to clean up my glass that I got the stuff on because it does say it sticks to glass. I don't want anything on my glass. So there we go. So pop any bubbles, put on a second layer. If you choose to, I'm going to show you one layer and two layers and show you the difference. And then you can make a decision from there how you want to lay your piece out. And when... Like I said, when all these are dry, we'll come back and finish this up. Okay, guys. So my stuff is finally cured. It's ready to be put together. I want to show you guys how beautiful this looks. So here is the one with two coats. You can see it is glossy. It's beautiful. has a small dome. I feel like if I would have kept layering it, I would have got more and more of a dome. But it took so long to cure and dry that it wouldn't be worth my time doing that. This is the other side where I did one coat. This came out perfect. It's beautiful. It almost reminds me of like a Mod Podge or a Sculpey liquid glaze. Something along those lines. It has a gorgeous shine. Um, the way that it lays out, you don't see the strokes, but you can see... That there's like a film over it from the glaze which will protect all your washi tape and your fabric so that is fantastic um my only real concern was two things when i drilled re-drilled my holes you could see some of the um top layer like the gloss inside the holes was kind of trying to pull off the um the light the top layer here so as i drilled through some of that gloss was coming out of the hole and then as i was pulling it off it almost seemed like it wanted to pull some of my top layer off and now i have let this sit for probably about 30 hours so that to me is a little concerning but i really did like the pro the product for one coat i would not replace my resin with this if you don't like playing with resin and you're looking for something that is um able to dome and give you the resin look this is perfect but keep in mind you are going to have to wait a long time for it to cure unlike uv resin that being said i like the product will i continue using it yes i have it will i use it all the time no if i'm working on a project that I don't care if it's done right away, then yeah, I'll use it. If it's a project that I'm doing a video on and I know I want to get it done for these guys right away, I will not use that because I don't like waiting 24 hours to 30 hours to finish up my projects. So, but it was a nice experiment to see if it would work and stuff like that. So I love it. It works great for one coat. Because that took about an hour to dry. So that I could deal with. Our next step is putting all our jump rings in. Let's finish this up. I am excited to finish this piece up. Now, I have a bigger jump ring. I'm not sure. I want to kind of put this in and see if this is going to fit properly. Um, if it's going to be big enough. Because I'm not sure... If this jump ring is even going to be large enough. So, no. I don't think it is. So, let me get my larger one. I don't like forcing things in. Because then that's where you kind of run the risk of breaking your pieces. I know I have some larger ones here somewhere. Oh, they're in another jar. Okay. Alright, here are my larger ones. So I have to go with the real big ones for this one. All right. So I'm first going to put my um, charms on. Let me get 
get that in there. There we go. Okay. So I want to make sure that this leaf kind of lays in there real nice. But I want this little flower one on first. So I'll put my flower on. I'll put my leaf on. And then I will close my jump ring fully. And I want to make sure this is closed all the way. There we go. And that will be our middle section. I think that is so cute with those little flower patterns. Adorable. So now we got to start linking all our stuff together. And I'm hoping these jump rings will be bigger. If not, those one, this one will work. So let's see if we could get these two. Oh, and I put on the wrong one. Oh, stinkers. All right. So I put it in the wrong hoop. So put it in. And I laid this out so I knew exactly how it was going to um, connect together. Okay, you could also flip these around and put them together like this as well. You don't have to um, keep the solid ones all together. You could flip them and kind of go back and forth. And I actually like that idea a lot. So I think I might do that on here just to have a little fun with it. Let's go like that. I think that'll be fun. Maybe? No, I can't do that. But wait, can I do that with this? Yes, I can. Okay. I don't know why I didn't think I could. This is going to be a really fun necklace. I absolutely love how this is coming out. And I love that we're able to create as we go. So it's not like you have to have it completely planned out. So now I did cut my chain um, to the length that I want it. So just... Uh, measure out how much you want and cut it to the length that you would like. I always like to put my chains up around my neck and kind of lay it around to get a general idea how long I want each one of my pieces. I used to measure them all the time. Then I kind of stopped doing that because when I would do it, they were always just a tad bit too short or a tad bit too long. And then I was wasting a lot of chain so to me, um, I like just to wrap them around my neck and measure that way. But you do it whatever way you prefer and whatever is easiest for you. Okay. And now I have my chains on. So now I'm going to get my tiny jump rings. And then I will start attaching all my pieces together. So the first one... Just put your jump ring on. Make sure it's fully closed. The other side. Put the jump ring on the end of the chain. And then put your clasp on. And then close that. And then all our pieces are connected. And we have this gorgeous necklace made out of wood blanks. Look how beautiful. How fun is that? I think that is absolutely gorgeous. I am super happy with this. And like always, I love that they are always double-sided. 
I absolutely love that. So all you would have to do is take your leaf and swap it over. That's all you need to do to have it. Or you could just kind of lay it inside like that if you want. But I would swap it over. But I, I think this came out really nice. It was super easy. The um, We got to try out a new brush on gloss glaze. So I really hope you guys enjoy creating this new wood piece with me. If you did, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up and um, share my work with everybody else. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.